this is week three of our giving, praying, fasting challenge. And uh, if you were here a couple weeks ago, you remember that we challenge everybody to uh, participate in three areas. One in giving, uh, in the area of giving, that everybody would be a tither for these 12 weeks leading up to December 8th. And uh, so this is your opportunity to give God the tithe. We also ask everybody to consider giving the equivalent of one week's wage uh, toward the cost of the new sanctuary. Uh, and, and so over the next 12 weeks, by December 8th, if everybody could give the equivalent of one week's wage, uh, that would help us out. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. And then in the area of praying, uh, hundreds of you are joining us uh, five times a week, uh, or at least one of the times on Tuesday morning, Wednesday night at 6, Friday night at 7, Saturday morning at 6.30, and then again here this morning at 8.30, we're coming together to pray and ask God to open the heavens, right, and so that God would minister uh, to us. And then the area of fasting, we've asked everybody to consider a 24-hour fast once a week uh, through December 8th. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for all those of you that are participating and being part of that. God is doing some good things. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I sense some things changing in the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere. There's an urgency, there's an excitement, there's an anticipation in my life and for the people of God. So if you're not yet participating, it's not too late. Join right in and uh, let's believe God today for greater things. Awesome. Awesome. Hold those ties up. Let's give God thanks for them. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to give. Today, when we give, we understand that some supernatural things are happening. You're changing our hearts. You're breaking off of us things that don't matter. And you're giving us a heart for eternity. God, you're, you're turning your face toward us. You're giving us favor as we give today because you're paying attention. Lord, you are, you are opening the heavens, just as Malachi said. And so today we give in faith. And today, God, we activate all of the promises of God concerning giving. And we believe for the people who are here today who have a need, that you're going to meet that need and then some. We give in faith today because you're a good God and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Hey, this afternoon at 3.30, we're going to have a, a class called Grace 101. And if you are new to Grace in the last few months or if you're not yet a member and would like to be, I want to invite you to join Tracy and I this afternoon at 3.30. And uh, that should be plenty of time for Indy to put away Jacksonville. I'm thinking strategically here today, all right? And so join us in the choir room. Uh, if you're new to Grace and would like to find out more about what, what God is doing here and how, how things work and you'd just like to discover more about it, it's a totally non-committal class. Uh, but for those of you that say, hey, I'd like to pursue membership and become an official member, then uh, that class is required. Child care is provided and it's free. And I heard a rumor there'll be some refreshments. I'm just saying, all right. So join us today at 3.30. You don't have to register, just come. And uh, use this door right over here if you don't mind. All right, Acts chapter 10. If you would take your Bible there and go to Acts chapter 10. Uh, we are giving and praying and fasting because we are believing for what happened to Cornelius' house to happen to our house. I said we are asking God to, to do some things in us, in our church, and in our homes uh, what happened to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10? Well, you say, Pastor, what happened to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10? If you've missed the last two weeks, I highly want to encourage you to go back and watch it online or listen to it because we've learned that Cornelius experienced divine revelation, right? He had revelation from heaven. He had a vision from God. Uh, he had divine direction. The, the angel came to him and said, here's what you're supposed to do. He had divine visitation because how many know when angels come to visit you, that's called a divine visitation, uh, he had a household blessing. His household was blessed. He had household salvation. Every one of his family members got right with God on the same day. That's pretty awesome. And an outpouring of God's Spirit. God's Spirit was poured out of Cornelius' house on that day, and he had divine favor. Remember, the angel said, God is with you. God has remembered you. God, your, your prayers and your giving and your alms have come, into the Lord, has come up before the Lord. And so he basically, he said, today's your lucky day. You say, Pastor, how can we believe for those things? Because there, is a, there, there are some uh, spiritual laws at work that preceded all of these blessings from taking place. And those three, three ingredients that opened the door for God to move in Cornelius' life this way, we've learned is three things. One is, I'm going to help you here. One is giving. The other is, the other is, okay. Now, we as a church believe God's word 
And we're saying, God, we believe that you are calling us to this season because you want to do the same thing in us that you did for Cornelius, right? This past week, I, I, I received an email from a, a person in our church. I won't share their name, but they said, toward the end of the service last week, Pastor, you had us bow our heads and pray. And, and I began to pray and ask God to help me understand. And pe- let, me, let me show you. Here we go. Towards the end of the service, before the altar call, you had us bow our heads and pray. This was last Sunday. As you were praying, I saw a fire as though it was a ceiling hovering over the heads of the congregation. I began to think to myself, what was that? And why weren't their heads catching on fire because it rested so close? You didn't even know there was never. Okay, here we go. I began to pray and ask God to help me understand, and peace came over me, but I still was overwhelmed. I wrestled with this for a few days. I shared it with a friend that I felt I could trust and would not think I was crazy. She revealed to me that that was the Holy Spirit and a vision of the outpouring on our church, and she encouraged me to share it with you. And now I'm sharing it with you. And, and I want to tell you what, church, this is the third person that's come to me over the last two weeks and said, God gave me a vision. God, God showed me something while I was sitting in church today. You know what's happening? It's happening. God is opening the heavens. God is visiting his people. He's given divine revelation. He's given us divine visitation. He's going to give us household salvation. He's going to give us household. Uh, am I the only one that believes this here today? Because God is preparing us for good things. God is preparing us for good things. If I could get some water up here, that would be great. Now, Acts chapter 10, let's go back to the story here, and I want to read the first four verses from the Amplified Bible. By the way, notes are in your bulletin for you to follow along here today. The Bible says, Now living at Caesarea, there was a man whose name was Cornelius, a centurion, captain of what was known as the Italian Regiment, a devout man who venerated God and treated him with reverential obedience as did all his household, and he gave much alms to the people and prayed continually to God. And about the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God entering and saying to him, Cornelius. And he, gazing intently at him, became frightened and said, What is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, Your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. Okay, so this sets up the story, and the rest of Acts chapter 10 tells about these wonderful things that happened in Cornelius' life. Because of his giving, because of his praying, and because of his fasting, Cornelius experiences this divine visitation from heaven. And it results in all of these things we just mentioned, divine direction, divine favor, household blessing, all of these things, and an outpouring of God's Spirit. Now, why did these things happen? Now, we have been making the case for these last few weeks, but it's because of his giving and because of his praying and because of his fasting. Now, I know, I know some of us are thinking, okay, Pastor, I understand. Prayer and fasting, that results in supernatural uh, effects. That results, thank you very much, that results in good things happening in the church, you know, as far as an effect on the supernatural world. But I don't see where giving fits in this. Okay, I, I thought giving was about just funding the church. I thought giving was just about, you know, paying for stuff. I thought, I thought you know, giving to, in the offering and all those types of things, I thought that was just, you know, that, that's just God's way of paying for stuff. Well, you're wrong. There's a whole lot more to giving than just that, okay? It's more than just an exchange of money, more than just dropping an envelope in a basket, more than just a transfer of funds from your bank account online to the church's bank account, more than just a click of the mouse on your computer or the send button on your smartphone or your tablet. Some supernatural things happen when you give. Some supernatural things happen when you give to the Lord, when you give to God. Some amazing things happen when we give. That's our message this morning because what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to break down these things. What happens when we give? What happens when we pray? And what happens when we fast? Because when we understand how they work and why they work, how many know it's going to create faith in us to do those things? And as a result of our acts of faith, God's going to honor our faith. And guess what he's going to do? Divine visitation, divine revelation, household blessing, household salvation, outpouring of God's spirit. Am I in the right church today? So today our question is, what happens when we give? 
What happens when we, when we give to the Lord? What happens when we give to God's house? Well, there are four things. Write these down. If you don't have notes uh, nearby, you write these down. Number one, when we give, we train our hearts. We train our hearts. Did you know that your money and your heart are connected? Your money and your heart are connected. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Now, some people mistakenly say this, where your heart is, there your treasure is, and Jesus did not say that. He says your heart follows your treasure. It's not your treasure following your heart. And that means there's a connection between your heart and your money, all right? So get this, get this. Every time I give something away, it affects my heart. Nod your head if you're with me. Every time I give something to somebody, it affects my heart, okay? Now let's talk about the heart. What does the Bible say about your heart? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, this is not good news. Look on the screen with me and read it out loud. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our hearts are not good. Our hearts, the Bible says, are desperately wicked, and, and, it, and, and it's crazy. So guess what? By default, we are selfish, full of greed, materialistic. That's from VeggieTales for all those of you that are paying attention. Do I have your attention yet? All right. Turn to somebody and say, you're so selfish! Everybody, have you ever seen the cartoon, The Englishman Who Went Up the Hill and Came Down with All the Bananas? It's good stuff. It's great theology for your kids, I'm just saying. <laughs> By default, our nature is selfish and self-centered and materialistic and all of those things, right? Now, you say, well, Pastor, I don't really believe that. Well, watch this. Did you know that shopping has become the most popular weekday out-of-home entertainment? In the United States, there is 16 and a half square feet of mall space for every man, woman, and child. More people visit Minnesota's Mall of America than Disneyland, the Grand Canyon, and the Grand Ole Opry combined. Now, what, we live in a materialistic society, right? Because we're not even talking about eBay and Amazon and all the ways that you can buy things online. According to a PBS special about consumerism in America called Affluenza, it says the average American shops six hours a week but spends only 40 minutes a week playing with his or her children. Recently, more Americans declared bankruptcy than graduated from college. And in 90% of divorce cases, disputes about money played a role. So we have this issue with selfishness. We have this issue with self, uh, 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 self-centeredness. And it all started with Adam and Eve in the garden, right? When the first man and the first woman chose to follow their appetites rather than follow God's directions. It's a problem. Our hearts are wicked. It reminds me of a mother who wanted to teach her daughter a moral lesson. So she gave the little girl a quarter and a dollar for church. She said, put whichever one you want in the collection plate and keep the other for yourself, the quarter or the dollar. So when they were coming out of church, the mother asked her daughter which amount she gave. Well, said the little girl, I was going to give the dollar to God. But just before the collection, the man in the pulpit said that we should all be cheerful givers. I knew I'd be a lot more cheerful if I gave the quarter, so I did. <laughs> How many know that's an accurate picture of us, right? We want stuff. We want to take care of ourselves. But the Bible says every time I give, I am breaking those things off of my life. Every time I give, I am loosening the grip of greed. I'm loosening the grip of self-centeredness. I'm loosening the grip of, of, of materialism in my life. Giving is the antidote to greed. Giving is the cure for materialism, right? Giving breaks the spirit of self-centeredness so that I might be in position to receive what God wants me to have. I'm not even in the right church today. Do you see this? Something happens to my heart when I give. Something supernatural happens in me when I give. Look at this. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, the scripture says the purpose of tithing is to teach us to put God first in our lives. Another translation is, is to teach us to fear God. 
Why did God create this thing called tithing? Why did God create this opportunity for giving? Because God says the whole purpose of it is to train you. It's to train your heart to put God first, to fear the Lord. It's a training tool because it dramatically affects your heart. Now, by the way, in the Bible, there are three types of giving, all right? And this is a very easy thing that rhymes, so everybody should be able to see this. Tithe is a debt I owe, okay? Offerings are a seed I sow. Alms are a gift I bestow. Okay, so let's go back through this. Tithe is a debt. Tithe is a 10%. The first fruits, the first 10% of your income belongs to the Lord. That's a tithe, okay? Now, guess what? The Bible says the tithe is not yours. It belongs to God. The tithe is holy, belongs to the Lord. It is not yours. It is a debt that you owe. It is God's money. Is this new revelation for y'all? You guys, you ones? I was on a bus in Dallas, Texas in the airport this past week, and I had this... Sweet little old lady just kind of talking it up with us and say, y'all. I said, what's, what's the, what's the pr- plural version of y'all? And she says, what does she say? All y'all is what she said. All y'all. <laughs> All y'all. I said, okay. I just had to listen. Tithe is that first level of giving. Get this. Tithe is the training wheels of giving. Okay? So it's a debt that I owe. Offerings are seed I sow. So when I get above the tithe, now I'm sowing seed. I'm giving an offering to a missionary, to a need, to a project. Are you with me? Or a guest. And the Bible says that's a seed that I'm sowing, and I can expect a return from that. Just like I put a seed in the ground, I can expect a harvest. Now, alms are a gift that I bestow. It's a gift to the poor. It's a gift to somebody in need. It's a gift to somebody uh, in dire circumstances, and you expect nothing in return. It's not a loan. Right? It's not you're going to get this back with interest. It is a free gift. Okay? And so those are the three types of giving in the Lord. Why does God ask us to do those things? Because when we do those things, it changes our hearts. Every time I release that money to the Lord, something supernatural happens in my heart. Instead of being desperately wicked and self-centered and, self and, and being materialistic, all of a sudden God begins to train me to be more eternally minded, to be more God-focused. Come on, somebody. What happens when I give? We change our hearts. Second thing, what happens when I give? We get God's attention. We get God's attention. Now watch this. This is pretty awesome stuff. Because this is exactly what happened to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. The angel says to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now watch this. The angel says to Cornelius, because you gave and because you prayed, you got God's attention. Now I imagine it kind of going something like this, okay? This is not from the Bible. This is speculation from Pastor Wayne's head, all right? I imagine it going something like this. God's up in heaven, okay, minding his own business, And something gets his attention. There's an incense. There's a smell. Oh, that's an offering. Somebody's given an offering. It smells good. Where's that coming from? Who is that? Now, I understand God is omniscient. He knows all these things. I'm speculating. Okay? I'm just trying to illustrate. All right? My theology is not wrong. I'm just trying to help us understand something. And so an angel responds, that's Cornelius. You know, he's a Roman centurion of the Italian regiment there in Jerusalem. He fears God, but he doesn't know who Jesus is just yet, and he's searching. And God says, really, Cornelius, I like that guy. Hey, angel, where's Peter? What's Peter doing right now uh, there? What's he doing right now? And the angel says, well, he's he's in Joppa. He's at Simon the Tanner's house, and uh, he's a few miles away from Cornelius. And the angel says, okay, here's what we're going to do. Angel, uh, give me an angel over here. Come here, angel. Angel, go to Cornelius' house. And I want you to visit him. And I want you to tell him to send some men to Joppa and have them ask for Peter. And uh, and that Peter is supposed to come to Cornelius' house to talk to him and his family about Jesus. Peter will know what to do. Now, I want to need another angel. Angel, come over here. Come here, angel. Uh, Yeah, you go to Simon the Tanner's house because you got to go to go talk to Peter. He's going to have a problem with going to Cornelius' house. Okay? we got to help him understand what's going to happen here. And uh, I have a job for you to do, and I want you to show him, show him what I'm going to do. Now, what initiated that divine appointment? What initiated that 
activity in heaven is giving. Are you getting this? It got God's attention. The angel said, your giving has come up as a memorial to God. God has remembered you because of your your giving. This is powerful stuff. Now, this is not the only time in the Bible where giving gets God's attention. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. You'll recognize this story. Jesus sat opposite the treasury, and he saw how the people put money into the treasury. Now, let's stop right there for a second. What in the world is Jesus doing watching what people are giving? This is what he says. He's hanging back. He's watching people give. And he's watching how much they give. Things that make you go, hmm. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two copper coins, which makes a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself, and he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given at the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Now notice that it doesn't say that Jesus just happened to notice this woman. Or Jesus just happened to see what was going on. The Bible says here he was deliberately watching people give. Do you think he's still watching? Do you think he's still paying attention to what people give? Now watch this. He was close enough to see the amounts that people are giving. Now remember, giving was a little bit different back then. They weren't writing checks with numbers on them. They were bringing coins of gold and silver and copper and all these types of things. And watch this. He was close enough to see that the coins this widow gave were made of copper uh, in, through her hands, okay? So he was close enough to pay attention to what was going, going on. Now, it got Jesus' attention. So much so that Jesus made a teaching moment out of it and said, do you want to see generosity? That's generosity. Do you want to see what a giving heart really is? Watch the widow. Don't, don't necessarily be all concerned about these rich people who give out of their abundance. Look at this person who gave out of their need. Jesus is saying generosity gets my attention. Generosity gets my attention. Now, another way of putting this is that generosity gains divine favor. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, let's, in Numbers chapter 6, verse 25, we've talked about this over the years, right? The priestly blessing. The priest would pray this over the Israelites every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. Remember, another part of that is the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Another translation says, and give you favor. I want you to notice this part of the blessing. It says, because another translation says, the Lord turn his face toward you. Come on, somebody. May the Lord turn his face toward you. May the Lord pay attention to you. Are you getting this? So when I am generous and when I give to the Lord, the Bible says, just like Cornelius, just like the widow, bam, he's paying attention. Because you got a picture of his heart. You got attention to what he's doing. And the scripture says that when he turns his face toward you, he will have favor on you. I want God to turn his face toward me. I want God to have favor on me. And the Bible says giving helps that take place. Now, let me be clear for a second. You're not buying off God. Okay? We're not paying for God's attention because that's not at all what we're doing. We're not gaining favors with the Lord by our giving. Matter of fact, that's what the whole Reformation was about. Martin Luther, all those guys, the Catholic Church had had, had these practices for years and years of paying for indulgences. They'd go to the church and they'd find out how much does it cost for dead cousin Bob, who was a hellion, to actually get to heaven. Well, that's $1,000. Okay, $1,000. That is wrong. Okay, That was wicked. And that's why the Reformation took place. One of the reasons the Reformation took place because they had a poor, poor view of the grace and mercy of God. Listen, but because giving is attached to our hearts, God is moved when we give him our hearts. Well, don't you miss this. God pays attention because he understands that your money is attached to your heart and when you give to the Lord, you are giving your heart to him. He says, oh, man, 
Something good's going on over here. I'm going to pay attention. You show somebody who is generous, show me somebody who is generous toward God, and I will show you somebody that God is generous toward. Show me somebody who is generous toward the Lord, and I'll show you somebody whom the Lord is generous toward. A few weeks ago, we heard Pastor Dave Williams talk about favorites, right? Ammonites, Moabites, favorites. I want to have the favor of God. One of the ways to have the favor of God is to be a generous person because generosity gets God's attention. This past week, as I was preparing for this, the Lord reminded me of a, of a time when he dealt with me about giving. I was a freshman in Bible college. I had just left home, okay? So I went from Columbus, Indiana to Springfield, Missouri. Uh, didn't know anybody from Adam, but I knew God had called me to the ministry, and that was the place where he directed me to go, okay? So when I got there, I had $100 cash in my pocket, okay? That's all I had, $100 cash. I go to this missions service. And the very first mission service of the year, this mission service is for students and faculty at the school. And so they're asking people to give uh, toward missions, toward this particular missionary or missionary need. They're asking them to make pledges. They're asking them to make an offering. And I remember sitting there. It was an outdoor service. And I'm thinking, Lord, how much do you want me to give? And I heard the Lord say, give it all. And I remember thinking, that's all I got. And I think the Lord responded, that's all I want. I stole that from Robert Morris, if you remember. I don't, I don't remember wrestling a lot over that, but I remember being obedient, and I gave it all to the Lord. And I don't remember being upset about it at all. I remember being excited about it, that God gave me the opportunity to give. And you say, okay, Pastor, what happened? What happened? Did, did you get rich? Did, did, no, it, nothing. You know, I do remember that, that I left that school y- that year with no school bill, right? There was no debt for me to pay. But as I was praying through this this week, the Lord reminded me of something. It was that next year uh, that something pretty weird happened to me. The president of the class who had been elected the previous spring, for whatever reason, didn't come back to school. And so some people started seeking me out to be president of the class. They're like, hey, you should be the president. You should be the president. I'm like, you don't understand. Uh, I don't do that, okay? Okay. Uh, I've had, I had this conversation with all, you guys, all y'all, right? Uh, I was a wallflower in high school. I mean, I was, I was nobody. The reason I don't go back to my high school reunion is because nobody will remember me. Right? 500 kids in my class. I was a vocational student as a junior, senior, junior and senior. I went to school for four hours, went to work for six hours, went home, went to church. That was my life. I'm just saying. I was quiet. I was more than a little backwards. All right? And, and so this was not me. And yet, I sensed that it was God doing something in me. And so I agreed, and I was the president. And the next year, they did it again, and they made me president of the junior class. And the next year after that, they made me president of the whole student body. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I didn't seek those things out. I didn't put up campaign posters and say, hey, vote Wayne. (laughs) Wayne's world. That's what you need, Wayne's world. And you say, pa- are, are you saying, Pastor, that that's because you gave that money? I don't know. But I know the Lord reminded me of that this week. And I know that when I give to the Lord, I gain his favor because I'm giving him my heart. Are you getting this, church? You could say that our church, Grace Assembly of God, has experienced divine favor. God has turned his face toward us. We're in our fifth building project. We've seen thousands of people find Jesus at Grace Assembly of God. Hundreds of ministries have begun, and, and thousands of lives have been changed. How's that happen? Well, I showed you this plaque a few weeks ago, right? Number 60 in the nation in giving, and Assemblies of God churches out of 12,000 churches, given over $4 million to missions. Listen, no, 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 don't clap, because I'm not tooting our own horn. I'm trying to paint a picture for you that when we are generous with what God has given to us, and we give it back to Him, and we give it away to others, the Bible says that God turns His attention and gives His favor to those people. Now you can give God praise. So, So what? When it comes to this big offering we're about to do, right, for our church, 
okay? We're asking people to give a full uh, week's wage toward the cost of the new sanctuary. Uh, some might look at that as a burden. Oh, man. Pastor Wayne's got another harebrained idea coming up here, all right? Or it's a yoke, or you feel under pressure, or, or some kind of thing. You, you know how I feel about it? I'm excited. I, I, am, I am giddy about the opportunity to give toward God's house, all right? I wouldn't miss this opportunity for the world because it's an opportunity for me to say to God, God, you are everything to me, and I want to show you with my resources, I want to show you with my heart that I love you. That's how I think. When we give, we train our hearts. When we give, we gain God's attention. And guess what? Number three, when we give, we activate the promises of God. When we give, we activate the promises of God. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, probably the most common promise that people talk about when it comes to giving is give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. How many have ever heard that verse before once in your life or a thousand times in your life? Right. We've heard it a lot. Now, the main thing about that verse I want you to see is that in order for the promises of God to find you, you have to participate. Right? Matter of fact, you have to go first. We have to participate first. Give, and it will be given to us. Notice it doesn't say, God says, I'll give to you, and then you give some to me. No, he says, give. And then the law of God is, I will give back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Nod your head if you're with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. So when I participate in giving, when I give, I'm activating the laws of God. I'm activating the principles of giving. And the principle is, if I sow a little, I'm going to get a little back. But if I sow a lot, I'm going to get a lot back. Is that what you're reading here? No one's saying yes. Is that what you're reading here? All right, now here's, here's the deal. Uh, I got a bag of seeds. Okay. So this is a bag of seeds, okay? Now, here, here's my seed. Now, this is our resources, this is our stuff, okay? I've got some choices when it comes to my seed. I could eat it. Wow. I should have practiced that one. Those aren't salted at all, those are nasty. Now, There's nothing I won't do to teach you God's word, I'm just saying. <laughs> Are seeds intended to be eaten? No, they're intended to be. So some of us, when it comes to giving, we say, I, I can't give that seed. I'm going to eat the seed. Listen, if you eat the seed yourself, you are removing all potential that it has to grow. Are you getting this? God can't multiply it. God can't give you a harvest because you've eaten the seed instead of sowing the seed, okay? So a farmer, he could say, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave the seed in the bag, right? Well, guess what? If the seed lays there in the bag, it's eventually going to die. It's not going to be any good. So how many know in order for the seed to work, you got to sow it, right? God bless you, Paul. I love you. <laughs> you got to let it go. Are you hearing me? And as I sow it, God, it goes into good soil, right? And God is going to make it grow. And so the only way that I'm going to activate the promises of God is to participate in the process by taking some seed, I won't throw any more, and let it go. Are you getting this today? What happens when I give? When I give, I activate all the promises of God when it comes to giving. And God says, if you want to reap a little, sow a little. If you want to reap a lot, sow a lot. So when we give, we activate the promises of God. And get this, get this, get this. This is going to sound weird to some of you. We should expect to see a return. 
We, what farmer puts seed in the ground and says, I don't think anything is going to happen? You know, probably not going to be a good year. No, he's sowing the seed. He's tilling the soil. He is expecting a harvest. And the same thing with us. When we sow a seed, right, offerings are a seed I sow. When I sow a seed, I can expect there to be a return on my sowing. If I sow a little, I'm going to reap a little. If I sow a lot, I'm going to reap a lot. Come on, somebody. Say amen. All right. And so it's the law of God. You sow, you reap. You sow, you reap. You sow, you reap. Guess what? If you don't sow, you're never going to reap. It's the power of letting go. And that's called faith. The power of letting go is called faith. To take this seed out of the bag and to let go of it, it takes faith. When you write that check, when you click that mouse button on your computer, when you click on your tablet or your smartphone, when you hit send, how I many know you just activated faith? And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. It takes faith to activate the promises of God. Something supernatural happens when I give because I'm acting in faith. And God's going to honor that faith, and he's going to give a return. Last one. Here we go. Here's the last one. What happens when we give? It changes our hearts. What happens when we give? It activates the promises of God. It gets God's attention. Here's the last one. When we give, the Bible says we open the heavens over our lives. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates. Another translation says the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. This verse says, oh, come on. This verse says, listen, giving to the Lord, giving the tithe to God, it's not legalism. It's not about being begrudgingly. It's not about poor attitude. When you bring the tithe to the Lord, do you understand what happens? Something supernatural takes place. The Bible says you open a door to the windows of heaven. And when we talked about last week what an open heaven was, right? An open heaven is a free flow of angels and ministering spirits, and there's no hindrances going there. Something happens when I give. The Bible says it opens the gates of heaven. It opens the windows of heaven. And now I am putting myself in position for a divine visitation, for divine direction, for a household favor, for a household salvation, for a divine anointing. Come on, somebody. When I give, I'm opening the door. But you know what? If I don't give, the door's closed. Pastor, where's God? Where's God? Where's God? Listen, you got to open a door. God expects us to participate in the process. Now, Malachi goes on to describe what an open heaven looks like when we tithe. Verse 11, he says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Watch this. The Bible says, I'll protect you. The Bible says, I'll make you fruitful. The Bible says, other people are going to brag on you. It's called divine favor. Are you getting this? And, and, and you're going to be a delightful land. You're going to be blessed of the Lord. This is what will happen to you. Now, you've got one choice at this point. Really, all of us got one choice. Do we believe God is a liar? Or do we got, believe God's word is true? Because when the rubber meets the road, here it is. What reason do you have to continue to say no to God? Please tell me. What, what reason do you have to continue to say no to God? Because God is saying, this is the no-brainer of all time. Something supernatural happens when we participate in this. God says... If you will, I will. If you will, I will. Part of the challenge for these 12 weeks is that everyone give a full tithe. Pastor, why would I do that? 
Why would I give God a full tithe? Well, to train my heart, to teach me not to be selfish, to break off the spirits of materialism and consumerism off of me and give me a heart like God. Why would I do this? Because I'm going to get God's attention. And God is going to turn his face toward me. Why would I do this? Is because I'm going to activate the laws of God, the promises of God. And God's going to do something in return because he's not a liar. Why would I do this? Because I'm going to experience an open heaven. And angels are going to come and ascend and descend and visit me and my kids and my house. It's going to give divine direction from the Holy Spirit. Giving is a matter of the heart, isn't it? See, we've, we've, we've allowed other people to define giving in the church. Well, it's about this and the wrong motives and, and it's about buildings and blah, 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 blah. And we have allowed other people's cynicism, ultimately the devil himself, to convince us to keep this door closed. You see this? We've allowed other people to talk, you know, because... Insert excuse, insert reason not to give, insert, you know, latest thinking, fad, internet, whatever. Translation, keep the door closed. Don't you open that door. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying today? I double dog dare you to open that door. I can say I double dog dare you because Malachi I double dog dares you. I dare you, God says, to open the way, open the, to give and see if I will not open the doors of heaven and pour out blessing on you that you can't contain. Now, I want our worship team to come and I want our ushers to come because I'm thinking if I was given a message about salvation, I'd give an altar call for salvation. If I was given a message about being filled with the Spirit, I'd give people the opportunity to be filled with the Spirit. So since we're giving a message about giving, I want to give you an opportunity to give. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, you say, why are we doing this? Well, God has given us a, an opportunity to be part of something great. I said, God has given this church an opportunity to be part of something great. What you see out in front of you you know, in, front of this, in front of this building, the sanctuary that's going up, it's a lot more than concrete and steel. It's a vision from God for a community that will be dramatically affected by the people of God in this church. Are you with me today? And so when we give toward the Lord, some supernatural things are going to happen. Now, I know that there are some people here that need a financial miracle in your life. Some have recently lost their jobs. Some have been downsized. You were full-time, now you're part-time. And there's some financial uncertainty going on in your life. I, and I totally understand for you, for you, this really is a step of faith. This is all faith. Because in the natural, it does not make sense. The last thing you want to do is let go of this seed in your mind. But I'm telling you today, if you want to see a harvest, if you want to see a return, if you want to see God meet your need, I'm going to do it one more time since I already did it. You got to let it go. I intentionally threw it at Kim Booker. Listen, do you eat the seed? Do you hold on to the seed? No, you sow the seed. You let it go. And you trust God to do what he said he would do. Is God, is God God enough to save you? Is he God enough to, to get you into heaven? Then he's God enough to meet your need. Partner with God today. Sow a seed. Activate the promises of God. And watch what God will do. So this morning, we're going to receive an offering, and this offering is going to be toward the new sanctuary, okay? Now, one of the things that's happened in our church when we went to design the sanctuary, we went with a budget in mind, okay? We didn't build a building and then say, hey, what the what's the budget going to be? We started with a budget, 
okay, and said, this is the building that we can build. Give us everything we got with this money. Well, how many know when you have a budget like that, there's a whole lot of things that you wish you would have had that you can't have. Budgets are about learning to say no. I don't like it. You don't like it. But that's what budgets are about. So there are a lot of things that were left out of the building plan that we would love to put back in. Some of them are, are AVL items. Uh, we would love to have a metal screen uh, in the middle of the platform and, and, and really make it a multimedia experience. Uh, there's some issues with some chairs uh, that are a little bit above the budget that, that we had set for that. And, and many other things. You say, well, what's this offer going to go? It's going to help us be better equipped from day one instead of saying, well, we've got this great building, but it's not quite fully equipped in the way that we want it to be. We would like it to be fully equipped on day one. Are you hearing me today? When we give, we get God's attention, right? And we gain God's favor. So if you want your business to have favor, why don't you sow out of your business? If you want your personal finances to have favor, why don't you sow out of your personal finances? And parents, listen to me. If you want your kids to have, have favor, teach them to give. Teach them to give. Teach them to learn to let go. Teach them to learn to let go of what God's put in their hand, and they'll be blessed. So we're going to receive an offering today so everybody would stand here this morning. Now, if you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor, I'm one of those folks. I'm not a tither yet. Well, let me tell you, your first gift today should be God's tithe. Okay, your first step in giving is you're not even to the offerings yet or the alms yet. Okay, you're still at the tithing level. Give God a tithe. Do it. Do it today. Figure out what that 10% is. Move that decimal point over once. All right, and give that to the Lord and begin to operate in faith and that all the principles of God's Word are going to come to pass in your life. What happens when we give? What, what's about to happen here this morning? And the decisions that you're making while you're standing there, and maybe you need to have a personal conversation with your loved one nearby. Tracy had an actual preview of what we're going to do today, so we actually had this conversation. This is what we're going to give today. But you know what's going on is we're deciding today if we believe what God's Word says is true. And by participating today, you're going to begin to activate the principles of God's Word. You're going to change your heart. Your heart's going to be affected by what you do here in just a minute. You're going to get God's attention. And it's going to come up as a memorial before the Lord. And you know what? You know what? Here's, here's the picture I got. There's going to be so much giving here today, so much generosity. And by so much giving, I'm not talking about a certain number. I'm talking about our hearts. What happened to Cornelius in heaven is going to happen to us. God's going to say, I smell something. Where's that smell coming from? And angel's going to say, it's in Indiana. You see that smoke rising up? It's not lightning. That happened way before. There's an aroma, an offering coming from the people of God. God says, well, that smells good. What do they need? What's going on in their lives? Angel, come on. Angel, come on. Angel. This is how I think. I believe that's what's going to happen here today. Are you ready to give? Now, I'm going to challenge everybody here should be given something. Everybody. Young person, old person, everybody in between. If you got pennies in your pocket, bring it to the Lord, okay? If you have to borrow from somebody else, hey, give me $500, I'll give it back. No, I'm just, $5, you know, and bring it to the Lord, okay? Now, um, you can give electronically, as some of you already do, and there's those plastic laminate things in the chair in front of you. You can bring and say, hey, I gave electronically. God bless you. Do that. Or you'll give electronically when you get home. Bring that to the Lord. Now, uh, our ushers have you surrounded today because not only are they in the front, they're in the back. Okay, so the front part of the sanctuary, you're going to come to the front. The back part of the sanctuary, you're going to go to the back. Okay, now here's how this chaos works. You're going to go out the right side of your section, and you're going to return on this side. Okay, so this section, you're going to come out the right side. You're going to return on this side. Got all that? Okay, so ushers, when you usher, you need to be in the very middle of your sections. Okay, one person in the middle of every section. So Kimbo, Kimbo you're right here in the middle. You got all the seeds out of your ears? 
All right, so you're right here. So everybody's going to go out this side of your section, you're going to come back. So those of you in the back part, you're going to go out that side and come back in. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Hold those offerings up in your hand. Hold them up. Lord, what we're about to give today, we give because you're a giver, and we want to be like you. Today, God, we ask you to change our hearts. Forgive us, Lord, for selfishness and conceitedness and being worried about our own stuff. Change our hearts, God. We give today, God, because we know that this is what you want. We love your house. We love you. And so, Lord, we give to you. And, God, we give today because some here, Lord, we have a need. And we want to sow a seed. And we're believing, God, that you're going to give a return and meet needs supernaturally. And, Father, we give today because your scripture says you'll open the windows of heaven. God, we want to happen in our house what happened to Cornelius' house. Divine direction. Divine favor. Household salvation. We're given today in faith, believing that you're going to bring all those things to pass. We're not manipulating you. We understand that. We're simply obeying your word and trusting your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen. Let's sing a song of worship and praise. Come on, worship team, as you come and bring your offering to the Lord. God bless you. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. you came to the house of God today, I want you to leave this place expecting your return, expecting the favor of the Lord, looking for God to move on your behalf. Because guess what? You just activated the promises of God. God bless you as you leave today. Have a great day in Jesus. We love you. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord.